So everyone, I stayed up all night playing with all the beautiful things of iPadOS 26 on my M4 iPad Pro, and like I said on Twitter, my iPad feels like a completely different device. Some way, somehow, Apple put macOS or all the good things of macOS on the iPad Pro without losing the essence of the touch-first interface that is iPadOS. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the top features that you need to try out with iPadOS 26 Beta 1. Let me know in the comment down below if you guys have installed this first beta and if you risked it all just to play with these new things. Let's get into it. So let's start off with the home screen and lock screen and this new liquid glass design. So I'm going to hold long press on here and we are going to create a new lock screen here. So as you can see, the new lock screen animations and the new lock screen kind of UI has changed a bit here. So you can click on whatever you see fit. I'm just going to click on a featured one here. You can go through the shuffle section right here as well and then kind of use your featured photos to click through them. And Apple did show this in their keynote and how it is adapted depending on what picture is there. So you can see my dog is taking up that nine right there. If I tap again, it enlarges it while keeping the same essence of the font and the thickness of the font that you do like. So if I tap again, it'll change that again. Overall, I'm a big fan of the new UI changes that they brought over when it comes to the lock screen. Nothing functionally really has been changed here. Just a new look, a new paint job, and again, the ability to kind of change up some of the font and color. Now this did change a little bit. You have some additional ones. The sliders are a little bit different. The colors are a little bit different as well. You can toggle between solid and glass if that's something that you want to do. And again, we are in beta one, so things are subject to change, A, and then things will get more stable over time. And then the new animation when you go from lock screen to home screen is also very pleasant. As you can see right here, everything, all the app icons kind of like go in, they bounce around, and it's just a little bit more playful. And then to go inside with that glass look, I did want to do this live with you guys. If you go into wiggle mode or jiggle mode, depending on what you guys want to call it, go into customize, you now have the option to go with the clear look. So if I tap on here, this is what it's going to look like. Again, this is beta one, so things are still going to be kind of malleable and changing over time. And again, it's going to mostly look better with first party applications as opposed to third party ones because the first party ones had all this time to get ready. So as you can see, you do have this glass look right here. And if I move this around, you can see that the glass has an effect as well. This is the first party one. This is a Slack one. This is the YouTube one. So you can see the YouTube one is not optimized for it right now. But of course, all the Apple widgets are optimized. You have some other applications down here. You have your files app and all the photos app. You can also see that some app icons have changed in terms of what they look like. So of course, the Safari app looks a little different. The Photos app looks a little different. The Camera app looks different as well, which we'll show in a little bit. But overall, this is what the new UI element and new UI design. Functionally, everything is the same. You can still put apps wherever you want. You can put widgets wherever you want. You can move things around from the dock to the home screen and vice versa. And then of course, you have all your different app icons over here. And then you do have the new applications which get loaded on here, which is gonna be the games application, the journals app, a dedicated phone application, which is something I never thought I would see on an iPad. And then the new preview application that was ported over to the iPad. But that is a home screen and lock screen experience with the new liquid glass design. Definitely go around and play with it and stay tuned for a more in-depth video of every single nuance change between 18 and 26 moving forward. This is just the top features overview. So now let's get to the part that everybody has been wanting to go to, which is going to be the new windowing system for iPadOS 26. So let's go into our settings and first go into the new multitasking and gesture screen. So for better or for worse, Apple did get rid of the slide over and the split view. Split view is still kind of there in the new windowing system, which I'll show you in a little bit, but slide over is now completely gone. But you do have the ability to go with your full screen apps, which is the more traditional way of using your iPad. You still have stage manager view in here, which is something that you can still use. And then you have the new windowing app mode. And then you have a couple settings here, like close all your windows after swiping home, automatically show and hide the dock, which I have turned off. And outside of that, there aren't any new settings for the multitasking and gestures. But now, let's say if I want to open up something like Safari. You can see that it is now in this new windowed mode. You still have the little nub down here, but the nub has changed in terms of the UI. If I go in here and type in 9 to 5 Mac, that is what it looks like. And what I like about this is that you no longer have to like go into a specific corner to resize it. You kind of just grab it, move it around, do whatever you see fit, grab it from here to move it around as well. Very fluid. The animations are great and just looks a lot cleaner and a lot more professional. You do have your three dots over here to X out of it, minimize it, as well as enlarge it. And if you long press or even hover over for a little while, you get the new tiling view, which is something that I've been wanting on iPadOS for a very long time. And then one thing we did test out is that for the most part, if you click away from it, it actually moves this over to the side so you can open up a new application. So if I want to open up maybe the files app, it'll open that way. You can also open another application by swiping down, which is what we've been used to by opening up your notes app here. We'll get into this piece in a little bit. And everything just is a little bit more fluid. Let's open up a fourth one. Maybe let's open up Twitter here and then we'll go into the windowing system or the tiling system. So we'll go here. We'll let this hover over. 
We'll click on this tile right here and then boom, you have this perfectly done on a two by two basis showing off what this is gonna look like. So this is what your new tiling and window system looks like for iPadOS 26. I absolutely love it and it's something that I've been wanting and yearning for for a very long time. Something to consider here, some third party applications are still kind of stagnated on what type of app they're gonna be. So the Black Magic Camera app can only be sized to a certain extent. And we're gonna to touch on secondary monitor support in a future video when we do a holistic view of the multitasking in iPadOS 26. Just know that it works. And if you have a current iPad that did have extended monitor support, it will work, but there are some nuanced changes to take into account. A couple last things here. What does it look like to minimize? If you do minimize it, it goes down to the dock. And then I can just go here and open that up again and it'll stay where it was. You can also go in here and if you want to enlarge it, you can enlarge it to go full screen and then go here and move it back down to a smaller view if that's what you want to do. And then to answer the question, how many windows can you have open at once? It maxes out at 12 windows and then after that, it'll start to move out the first window that was there first. So it's first in, first out when it comes to 12 windows open versus the only four that we had with each stage manager view. So that is a new windowing mode on iPadOS 26 in a nutshell, at least at a high level. Next up, let's get into the brand new Files app. The Files app is something that, again, it was one of those things that the Files app just wasn't great on iPadOS, but now it has gone a lot more professional and it does mimic and rival what the Finder app is on macOS. So the first thing here that you might notice is that you do have the ability to now move between the sidebar view and you can create a toolbar view here as well, which is similar to what you could do on the Apple TV app, which Apple did say that we're gonna do a while ago, they just ended up not really doing it. And then the next thing you have is just the ability to get a lot more customizable. So if you right click or double click on here, look at all these new options you have. You can remove downloads, download now, keep the downloaded, open windows, get info, compress. You have the ability to add to, customize the folders if you want to, you can completely delete it. And you also have the ability to format external files as well or external SSD formats. Albeit you could do that last year with iOS 18 or iPadOS 18, but here it's just a lot more fluid. You also have your new file menu up here. I mean, look at this. You can click on the files, you have your file menu. I mean, this is amazing. I did not think we were ever gonna see this. You have your edit, your view, your go, your window, your help. So you have the ability to really go really granular with something like this. So if I wanna drag one of these folders, for instance, if I wanna grab this one, I can drag it. And I think I should be able to drag it into the dock if I'm not mistaken. So as you can see, this is part of the iOS beta program. It is still a little glitchy and it doesn't look like there is either room or it's just not working. It looks like it's trying to do it, so if I let go, it still doesn't work. Maybe if I move this out of the way to give it more room, it still does not work. So there still is a little bit of a glitch. So as of right now, it looks like the folders aren't working, but let me test out one more thing. Yes, so I even tried deleting an application from the home dock to see if I could fit another one in here. Maybe there was a lack of room on the dock, but as of right now, it looks like the files just aren't being able to be ported over onto the dock itself, which I'm sure will change with an update as we move forward. But then some last little tidbits here, if you do want to check it out, you have the ability to go into a different view here if you want to. Just a, the UI just feels a lot cleaner, a lot tighter, a lot easier to use. And I'm just happy that, again, we finally have a true file system on iPadOS 26. But now let's move on to the next piece. The next thing I think everybody should try on iPadOS is going to be the new screenshot UI. So if you, again, screenshot like normal, the first thing that actually happens, which I wasn't able to show off, is the first time it does this on the new version of iPadOS 26, it's gonna ask you if you want the new way or the old way of screenshotting. So this is, of course, I kept it the new way because I wanted something different, but this is what it looks like. So you do have the ability to, again, resize here, although last time I did this, it was a little glitchy, still is. And then over here, keep in mind, this is gonna be X. If you press on this, then it's gonna just X out of the screenshot completely, but you just have a much newer UI. You have the ability to read into it if you want to. You can share from here. You can check it off if you want to. And overall, it just looks great. But one omission that they did here that they added to iOS 26 and on iPadOS 26, is visual intelligence. I'm hoping it comes in a future update, but again, as of right now, visual intelligence is not part of the control center and it's not part of the screenshot animation or screenshot UI of iPadOS, so that is something to consider, but I do love the new look of the screenshot animations and the screenshot UI overall. And then Apple did add some new applications that I'd recommend trying out. So they added a new games application, which is exactly like Game Center as we had before. And people have been posting on Twitter that this was all around during the Game Center update of iOS 5, which could be true, but I do like this new holistic view. So you have your home page, your arcade page, you have your play together page, and then finally you have your library as well. Again, things are a little bit slow right now and they do work eventually, so definitely give it some time if you're on the beta, but I probably wouldn't recommend uploading or downloading this to your main device unless you're ready to deal with some restarts, some springboard resets, as well as some slow application launches and things like that. But that is gonna be the new Game Center application. Then you have the journals application. The journals application I thought was extremely well done 
on the iPad Pro, because of course to me it makes just a lot more sense to have it on your iPad since you do have the Apple Pencil in order to get that done. And you'll just be able to actually handwrite a new journal entry. So if I press this plus button, you can start writing, you can grab this, you can actually handwrite if you want to. So, hello, and then just write it out and then it'll be translated into actual written text as well. So it recognizes everything. So journaling with your Apple Pencil is a new great way to get it done. Another interesting one is that we do have a phone application, which I'll put a screenshot of it right now so I don't have to show off all the phone numbers and things like that. But it's interesting to see how that's going to work. And we also have call forwarding and call waiting and things like that. And then lastly, we have the preview application. So this is going to upload and have everything of all of your recents in the preview. So this is all stuff that's on my iCloud desktop right now. And it works just like any other preview. So if I open up this one right here, it'll open up like a preview. I can edit it to a certain extent. I have my three ellipses right here. If I want to, I can rotate it. You can add visual intelligence. So it looks like visual intelligence is added to the preview application, but it doesn't seem to be fully working as of right now. But you can see that you do have all the features that you would with the preview app, which is great to see. And then also you can hit your ellipses here and you can do whatever you need to do. You can even remove the background, which is so interesting. So boom, it just removed my background right there. I wonder if shortcuts work here. Yeah, command Z is undo, which is great to see. So it works like a traditional version of the preview application. And then of course you can share and export it as a certain file if you want to, as well as save the image as an image for future reference. But that is a previews app and it's gonna be something that I know I'm gonna be using a ton moving forward. So now some other small little tidbits that I wanted to show off. In the notes application and with math notes specifically, we now have the ability to 3D graph. So if you have a 3D formula like, you can see that this will automatically pop up. You press insert graph and then it'll graph that for you. And of course that isn't a 3D graph, but if we go in here, pull up our tools, erase, erase the Y and do a Z. Then you can see that it actually changed it into a 3D graph that you can actually move around. So if I tap in here, you can actually move around and manipulate it and do whatever you see fit. You have some options down here as well. So this is gonna be great for those people that are again, doing this in school or need this for professional purposes and just needs a quick mock-up of some sort of formula that they can graph very quickly. Another new addition to the notes application or any time that you can use your actual Apple Pencil is that you have a new pen tool for calligraphy, which I believe is this one right here. It's for calligraphy. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but it is nice that we're adding more and more tools as time goes on. So more tools in the notes application is always a welcome addition. But there are a ton of other features and specific applications like the live translation in the music app, the live transcription in multiple applications, all the accessibility features. And it just feels like the iPad is finally not playing second fiddle to any other operating system in the Apple ecosystem. And that's why I think this is the biggest update to the iPad since we got iPadOS 13 way back when. But let's finish up this video and get out of here. So that will do it for this video, everybody. Definitely get subscribed because like I said, this was just a kind of overview in the top features that I think most people should try out when they first update. We are gonna be doing a nuanced kind of feature by feature in-depth review of all the hundreds of changes that happened between iPadOS 18 and iPadOS 26 because there is a ton of nuanced detail once you get really granular, especially in the settings menus. Those things are absolutely crazy. So if you guys do want to see something like that, a more elongated version of this, leave a comment down below of what you want to see, any questions that you might have. And I tried to answer as many questions as I could in this video. Definitely follow me over on Twitter because I post a lot of the changes kind of on the fly on there as well. I'll leave that right here if you guys want to check that out. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Let me know what you think of iPadOS 26. Is the iPad finally a computer for most people? Let me know in the comment down below. But if you want to watch more WWDC coverage, click on one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.